All right, so I thought we'd do an E3 roundup, seeing as that E3 2019 is over and Sony have turned off PSN uh, for some reason. It's back on now because I managed to sync my trophy early on. Oh, really? It's back on? Yeah. Oh, that's good. I, I literally just I, synced. I thought Sony might have to give away a few more games. <laughs> Dead Nation. <laughs> <Back> again. <laughs> It was, right. it was too much for them and they just fell asleep and yeah, they, they were like the PSN god all, all those announcements what we're going to do turn it off boys turn it off <laughs> we can't compete with that all right so what did you think overall anyway of 20, e3 2019 well, what did I think of? well phil, Sp- phil spent phil spencer himself you know summarized it pretty well in, our, in his recent interview with giant bomb he said um e3 is not the same thing without Sony." <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the fanboy comes out uh, very quickly. Uh, EA and nothing except uh, Star Wars. Uh, Sony was not there. Microsoft had nothing except uh, Kane, 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 Kane Reavers, uh, you know, Cyberpunk. Square Enix had two, two games, uh, two good games though uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake and The Avengers Project. And Nintendo, I barely pay attention to. Uh, they apparently the sequel to Breath of the Wild is coming. You know, it's it's in the works, though, so that's good. I thought that was a bit of a weird announcement, to be honest. Like, you'd expect them to be working on Zelda. Like, what else are they gonna do? Oh well, I mean, they let their fans know. I know, but it's like it's an it's like saying they're working on a new Mario. It's like, of course you are. You're Nintendo. But you know, Zeldas are like coming all different. Sides and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you'd expect with the success of Breath of the Wild that they'll do another one just like it. Like, what else can they do with that series? You know, for the big games. Then Benjo Kazooie, Benjo Kazooie went to uh, Smash, and Smash. Went, everybody went nuts. Which I don't understand what's so special about this uh, this character. Did but, you ever uh, play the original? And no, there's, probably not. there's not one specific moment that I remember that I went like, "Oh my, oh my god!" Like the trailer for the the, the trailer for Death Stranding, I think, was more exciting than the entire fucking. Uh, E3. Well, a Sony fanboy would say that, wouldn't they? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But did you watch all the conferences? Which ones did you miss? I watched EA. I watched Microsoft. I watched uh, Ubisoft. Nothing interests me there. Uh, Watch Dogs 3 looks like trash. Uh, <gasps> Did you watch Bethesda's conference? I watched Square Enix. Uh, I didn't watch Bethesda. How about the uh, PC gaming? No, I didn't watch that. But I, I, I watched uh, uh, most of the AMD to, uh, thing. But it was mostly like graphics, uh, graphics card talk for PCs. They briefly they did actually show have... Gears 5 gameplay. Uh... They, you know, I don't remember. If they did, it was so trash that I don't remember. Uh, I think the biggest news to come out of the PC gaming was the Shenmue exclusivity, the Epic Game Store, which caused everyone to for a riot. Grown. Uh-huh. <laughs> Grown collectively. So you think that E3 was bad because Sony wasn't there? No, E3 could have been could have been good if Microsoft had. A good conference is showing gameplay of Gears, gameplay of Halo. Uh, tell their fans that, hey, there we go. There's a logo fable we're working on. And not necessarily gameplay or trailer. Just let them know that. You oh, know, uh, you're still Flavor. salty about fable, aren't you? <laughs> it's, the, it's the closest thing that I Definitely going to be introduced, fable. <laughs> it was heavily rumored. It was heavily rumored for months that it was going to be there. Not from, uh, I... not, you know, not from... You know, common people on the internet, whatever. Let's get insiders, people in the business. Oh, is it insiders? Everybody's, everybody calls it the worst kept secret in the history of gaming. That Playground Games is working on Fable. Well, yeah, like they you, are definitely you, working on something or Fable or something like that. Uh, you see companies like you, you see Nintendo already announced uh, Breath of the Wild 2. Naughty Dog announced The Last of Us 2 five months after Uncharted 4 released. Kojima announced its games like a month after they stopped, you know, they finished put, putting chairs and desks in the studio. It's like you see all these companies, you know, just letting them know, you know, we're working on this shit, we're working on this and that, and they can't do it. Sometimes it's not always a good thing. I mean, look at Crackdown. If you're having issues, you know, they think, oh, the game's not looking too great, let's not announce it yet. 
Well, like, that's when you got to have confidence too. Yeah, yeah, but you, it's like uh, with Nintendo Retro Studios, like they made Donkey Kong and no one ever heard of them. Like they were working on a game for six years, nothing ever got announced, and nothing's been announced since. All we know now is they're working on the new Metroid, but we don't know what they've been doing for the past six years. So you don't know, like they could have started, stopped, started, stopped, have projects thrown away and never like gone anywhere. So you, you, same thing could have happened with Fable. I mean, it's one of those series where it's got a specific like character. It's like a very charming British, like the line head really nailed. It was, it was their aesthetic and the kind of games they made. So it's probably hard to replicate that again. I mean, you'd have to take it from a new direction, I think, you know, something more modern if you wanted to like get away from that kind of thing. Otherwise you're going to be compared to it constantly. So I guess for that studio, it's probably very hard to replicate it. Yeah. How about you, Scott? What did you think of E3 2019? It's that in between. It's that part when you're growing up your hair, when you're not quite sure you're going to show it along. Uh, they know those consoles are coming next year. They haven't got anything quite ready. It was a bit light, I think, on gameplay to a certain extent. There was a lot of announcements, but again, nothing solid other than some of the games we knew you know, had been announced a while back. Okay, we finally got dates for you know, Cyberpunk and some of the other games. But it was a bit, yeah, it was a bit, uh, I can't say drab. Do you think the, somewhat, do you think like the PlayStation 5 will be out before this time next year? No, I think it'll, I think it'll come out before um, the Xbox, but I don't think it'll come out. Because Xbox later. is holiday next year. Yeah. No, their holiday is the December, is like Christmas, November, December, nah, October, they're gonna November. Be, it's going to be like uh, PS4 and Xbox One when they released. Uh, PS4 released like a week before Xbox One, but they're both going to be in the holiday in November. I think they're both going to be next to each other? I know, they're going to be close, but I don't think they'll, I think the PS will be just before. But yeah, I think it's just a case of because they, they are coming up next year, they're not going to. Kind of, they don't want to shoot the load a little bit too early, do they? And this, and they haven't got anything solid down. They still want to be selling this generation. Though, if you watched Microsoft's conference, you would know they've got something to sell this. This uh, they've got an Xbox generation. They yeah, actually they got two, or three. <laughs> you could you know, never call it have one. That. No, they call it one, <laughs> but it's you know three. I still think it's uh, again with the hardware. Um, Sony are just as bad as well, obviously because they're the pro world, but with Microsoft having they're on their fourth iteration of Xboxes in the ones. You know, from the original with which came with the Connect, you could you had to keep the Connect to bring out the S model. But yes, okay, the S it was the same thing but in a slightly smaller form factor. But had a four K drive, which the original didn't have, that's right. The original Xbox didn't have a 4K drive, did it? I think. No, no. The Xbox One, I mean. It was um, the S that came with the, uh, the 4K. Yeah, so, the, yeah, the, so the S came with a 4K. You've got then the X, which came out, what, a year and a half ago? Um, yeah, and, the the SAD. and then the SAD, which has just come out now. Uh, this, it's just I mean, the only selling love. point of the S was the Blu ray, like 4K. It was, so, yeah. Because the, the games. And then you built. take that away, it's kind of like, well, you've got an Xbox again. <laughs> it's yeah, like no one the, bought the, the, the Xbox. Mo- the multi, yeah, for multiplayer purposes, the S is pointless. You you will have to go for yeah, an X yeah. just to have the power. And it it's, just seems to be no love there for, you know, from Microsoft. And you get the usual things. Now, I say it's that in between. Um, the, the studios obviously didn't come out completely swinging uh, the Ninja Theory game. Because, uh, you know, I mean, it, both it, Nintendo and Microsoft would have had their pick of third party with no Sony there. Like all the yeah, third party yeah. games that normally get announced at Sony conference, they would yeah, have had to have choose between I mean, you know, with, Microsoft and Nintendo. Uh, with Nintendo, I mean, Nintendo, no, they, they march to the beat of their own drum. So I, I take uh, whatever they do in any conference, you just go, yeah, Nintendo's going to Nintendo. You know, we'll just let them do what they got to do. Um, but yeah, I think it was a little bit disappointing. I think Microsoft could have snatched this completely, you know, you could say, oh, they won. They had no challengers, really, and they still didn't really win, in my eyes, which is just a bit... Yeah, um, yeah. So, it, yeah, it, it was, it's, uh, a bit, it's a bit damp. It's a bit, it's a bit moist. 
not, yeah. not I'd say it definitely was disappointing it like because Xbox started E three off, so it it kind of started off on a bit of a downer. Yeah. Like especially yeah. when you didn't see gameplay. Because if they would have shown gameplay of Gears Five and then gameplay of Halo Infinite and had it like a spectacular reveal and then said, Oh, it's launching day one with the next Xbox, I think people would have been like, Oh, really anticipated. But but no like is anyone really anticipating Gears Five and Halo Infinite right now? I don't like, think so. And maybe I would. Maybe I would be, but they didn't. Sh- they didn't give that's me. That's what I mean. They didn't. They didn't make you hyped for it. I think that's as, the biggest problem. There's nothing. I, mean, I was hyped watching. For. Um, I was watching the uh, Digital Foundry do a little kind of breakdown on the trailer or the, or the cinematics for Halo, and they seem quite impressed with what they could see there because obviously they're saying that's running on either PC equivalent or on the or, or development kit for the, um, the Xbox Scarlet. Now, it does have a very good resolution. You can see that, the textures, the lighting's good on there. But um, I think someone then put a screenshot up of, like, I think it was, like, Master Chief's texture or the character with Master Chief, and they showed um, one with Delson from Second Son for, de- for detail. And, and, it, and, it, and it's, <laughs> you're like, it's like, yeah, the detail on that's pretty fucking close or bet just as good. And I, yeah, and yeah, because p- part of that is, like, how good a studio is it's okay having the greatest tech in the world if you haven't got the talent to make use of it well obviously they're going to be running for 60 4k 60 aren't they on the uh, for halo and that's the main thing isn't it 4k 60 is that what you think they're going to be native they'll go for that definitely i think well, so I think the multiplayer they have, they have to they could... they'll have to, oh i'm being off well, 4k nah, but the wait. game definitely halo, the game will be if it's a halo single player five. Halo 5 on the X runs at 4K60 already, so I don't see why they could. I don't see why it's going to be. Yeah, and you can have a lot more textures and, and different kind of features. Wait, Halo 5 racing. runs at 4K60? On the Maybe X, on yeah. the X. On the X. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, you can forget about Microsoft have that thing, didn't they, where they just kind of drop old tech quicker than Sony do with like, things like their commercial tech. <laughs> you know, it's like. But it's. um. Yeah, I think the game. That, no, it's, it looked good. The lighting, resolution is all there. I think they should have just shown some gameplay just to kind of seal the deal on that. Um, and and that's uh, and that nonsense what they did with the um, the gears uh, kind of mode under the under the stage. The WWE wrestlers. <laughs> I thought it was. I had to look. I had to watch back. I said, "Did they say WWE wrestlers?" Because I just I don't watch wrestling anymore. I had no idea who uh-huh. they were. They must have that that damn basement was a stunk of protein farts. You know, it's just gonna. <laughs> but uh, that's what the gas was. It wasn't like no food. It was <laughs> the just methane. Them. Yeah, but um, yeah, it, it's like, yeah, I think Microsoft didn't. I think didn't really do enough for their fans, where they really could have like just, just took the floor, walked out the crown quite nicely. And I can understand yeah, what feels. With- Sorry, I say I understand what Phil said. Like you know, it's not the same with Sony because they are the rivals. I mean, I know you've got Nintendo, you've got Stadia, you've got some, you know, PC, you know, Masters. it pushes them to be it better. It does. It does. They both push. They they both work off each other, and and this is where I I do think you know it's it wasn't a good generation for us all because Microsoft fell so far behind. Well, where was the impetus for Sony to go? Fuck, quick. Let's do some something extra. It was no need. Why were they doing? They were sell. They were selling hand over foot. You can see PS Plus right now. It's like they've given you less. They're charging you more, and there's no impetus to make a better deal. Because no, 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 not at the moment. This next, is why competition's great. It, next generation, it might come. Th- no, it might come back round again because they'll have two. Uh, no, say two generations to uh, maintain. Yeah. So. So and hopefully been... more competition hopefully, you know, from yeah. Stadia or whatever. I don't, know. I, don't, I don't know for how long Microsoft will continue to give 360 games because they just, they just said that they just released their last batch of backwards compatible ones. Well, yeah, th- th- that will probably, probably stop um, this genera- next generation as well, wasn't it? But I think but they with... said they're going to stop now and start again. No, nah, what is console? they're going to have to they're going to have to work on the same titles that they have backwards compatible, but they're gonna have to port them for uh, on Scarlet, but so Mi- Microsoft have had to had to do a lot of backwards compatibility for the the sheer lack of 
quality titles I think they've had this generation as well. I this think is that's one of the, the dumb more. things about backwards compatibility. Because if you do it software wise, you'll always run into that issue of licenses, like only allowing certain titles and stuff. Whereas if you just stick one piece of hardware in your console from the 360 or the original Xbox, and you can do hardware compatibility, so you don't have to worry about paying anyone for a license. Because that's what because it's going to be like the original PS3, which was out there. For PS5, yeah. for example, how expensive can it be to put like a mini PS1 or mini PS2 or hell, even a mini PS3 in the in the goddamn thing? That's the thing. thing. You don't need you don't need everything. Say like the PS1, you don't or the PS2. You only need like a, a specific chip that can just read PS2. the discs. Yeah, yeah. PS2 to does PS1. PS1. And once it can read a disc, that's it. The license carries over. You don't have to worry about porting or whatever. It's only when you want to do HD remasters and stuff that's when the issue becomes. Because like Xbox, that's what it started doing, didn't they? They started just uh, the redoing is the textures. Machines is when they manufacture them, they take in consideration every single fraction of a cent. And they because you know they produce these yeah, things yeah. in millions, so you multiply yeah. every cent for millions, and it. Then it becomes. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it'd be great though to have a PS5 that can play everything hardware based. It's still a possibility. They won't. They, they, nah, still they won't. That they won't do it. They won't. They won't because they want to sell you games again. <laughs> they want to sell it on the store. If everyone's got the discs, then there's no need really, is there? And when they do the PS2 cla- PS1 I mean, classic, they too. can make it. <laughs> I mean, they can make it backwards compatible and still sell the games uh, on the store. I mean, if you have the CD, okay, cool, put the CD in. Uh, but you, of course, uh, I don't know how many I, people still have a collection of uh, a, a million PS2 games still with them. So if somebody wants no, to no, play... That's what I mean. It creates a market of competition then, and Sony don't like that. Like, so, Sony don't want someone else selling the same game on their service. But they got PS now. They'll push that. You know, that's. Yeah, that's the PS idea. now. Yeah. Why would they? Yes, no, the, the selling the selling point of PS now has to be something else. It has to be I don't know. They got to improve the streaming capability. Well, they got to. What the whole deal with Azure is meant to be improving that. Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. Hopping on, isn't it? Can they hop on the server? I, I don't think the market is very big, to be honest, for streaming. I think it's all a bit the of a entire problem. the entire streaming thing. This all E three was like you know everybody thought that streaming was gonna be like the big you know, like a protagonist in this E three. It was like Microsoft barely talked about it, and the Stadia uh, the Stadia well, Connect event to... was like bah was like <laughs> it was trash. Yeah, especially when you can't even watch the conference without it either going off or going to three sixty p. Well, good luck with a that good 4K exam- game. Yeah, well, a good example was the um, not away from gaming, uh, the Champion League final on BT Sports uh, YouTube channel. So it was streamed in 4K. Oh really? It looked it it looked like a, it it did last year. This year it looked like a old impressionist. Um, <laughs> uh, like a Van Gogh painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was streak. It was just streaking just across. Everywhere. This... <laughs> yeah, it was horrific. It was. It was like, oh god, this is not good. And that's like, I, I, you know... I have to say though, have you guys ever tried uh, remote play? On your PS4? Um, I think I tried it when I first got my Vita. That's when I tried it. So it I might tried, have improved um, since. No. I, I tried. I tried it for the first time, like a couple of days ago. Uh, in, in your house uh, on your like personal Wi-Fi, it works well. Yeah. The issue I mean, is when it, you it get outside of your Wi-Fi. It wasn't perfect. I mean, it still had latency, but it was like I could play a slow RPG or a slow, you know. Oh slow. yeah, yeah. Visual novel games, stuff like that. That'd be perfect. Mm-hmm. But it's only games that require like quick input. That's when you right. you start to see the problem. Just to try, I told you I almost won a game of Apex, but it wasn't easy. Like I, I was fighting <laughs> against, uh, I was fighting against my own inputs. What were you playing on then? What do you mean? What device were what you hardware? doing remote play? Uh, my laptop. Uh, I brought my okay. laptop downstairs. All right, so you're playing on your laptop on your P- to your PS4 Pro. Yeah, I didn't understand. But at the beginning, at the beginning, it was not working. I was like, I don't understand why this doesn't work. And I realized that PS4 had to be in rest mode. I was like, okay. Oh right. <laughs> yeah, because uh, 
I guess PS Now must be pretty popular because they keep adding titles. Like we don't really hear much about no, it. The, the the game selection is actually pretty awesome. It's, it's very PS3, big, but the the PS3 selection is really great. They have the entire you have the entire franchise of Killzone, Infamous, Metal Gear Solid. Um, what else they have in there? So the, like the, the PS3 selection is great. Like if 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 they allowed. Like, like if PS4 was backwards compatible with PS3 and you could download these games native and play natively on the system, the the, the subscription I would I would be subscribed because the PS3 selection is great. But yeah. it's just like oh my god! I remember when I tried Killzone Two the last time the, the last time they allowed me a seven day free trial. Man, Killzone Two wasn't playable. Uh, <laughs> Red Dead Redemption One was playable, but it was still like very laggy. It's like. Yeah, that's the problem. We we right, are, right, I think, right now, it's, it's too far away. It's still early for that. Yeah, yeah. I think once it gets to like a really good connection, stable, and it's you see the problem with streaming as well is like it's not just about you. It's about like how many people like day one are on that service, or if a new game launches, how many people are playing that at one at the same time. Like the other, that's um, when the issues crop up. I think less so much for, for definitely in the UK because we have pretty much unlimited broadband. We have no well, caps to it. Supposedly. At all. But well, what, yeah. hap- but what happens though it's, if you start like downloading a terabyte of stuff is your connection will just keep going slower and slower and slower to try and yeah, limit you it. might start seeing yeah, you might start seeing a bit of traffic shaping and things like that. But yeah. a lot of, but don't know, like a lot of um a, a lot of packages, especially in the US, have caps on them because it's quite expensive that's another thing as well like streaming is very much a first world problem like the people in other countries like say if you're in brazil you, you're gonna have no hope really are you it's not really a you're not worried about streaming you know to worry about how fast yeah, you I, hey, halo was going to be play. Honest, yeah i think the best place to be i think when they saw you know for streaming is either going to be like that's, I mean, it's, it's gonna be, that's what i mean it's going to be very Maybe like West Coast, East Coast, parts of Europe, and Japan and yeah. a- Japan Asia. You know, cause it's, so, it's, like... so it's a very small market, really, when you add it yeah. up compared to the world. Tim in Utah is having trouble downloading. You know, it's yeah, it's just you know, you know, we're gonna have things like that happening. And it's it's still too early. This is why I'm wondering yeah. how good this Stadia thing will be. But uh, supposedly it's it. good, but I think if they wanted to be successful. Because at the moment you have to like have a subscription service. See, what they should really do is any free to play game should be free to play. That way they like they get you in it. You know, the so you get to play Fortnite or whatever for free because it's mm. a free to play game. And that way you get used to playing it on Stadia. Yeah. It's set it's set there's set and yeah, it's just it's, no, it's just automatic. Like a, go, oh yeah, I'll just buy the a game. gateway drug. Yeah. That's how Welcome I think they should do it. Rather than Fortnite having did. like a paywall where you've got to pay before you play. Class right. A Fortnite. <laughs> All right, so back to E3. Top five yeah. favorite games you saw. Top five. Ooh. Oh, did you only. Oh, I, I spoiled no, spoil, no, I I spoil, it. Um... I spoiled it for you this <laughs> day. Oh, All right, we, with your fictitious games. <laughs> All right, so uh, Nick, what's your top five? Doesn't it have to be in a specific order. Uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. It looks sweet. So yep. Final Fantasy VII for Square. Uh-huh. The remake. You see, it's meant to be coming out like early next year, right? The first episode uh-huh. or wh- whatever they're going to be calling it, and they don't uh-huh. know how many games is going to be. That's yeah, a real we, problem. We know that this one is like it's all set in Midgard, and it's it's, yeah, big so enough it's to the be prologue a, of the game, game on basically. It. It's meant, you know, but it, they have enough content to, you know, they, they said this is a game on its own. That's right? the issue. You they could run two, into the Shenmue problem where they, they never get to finish the game. Yeah, I mean, they, they meant to capitalize on that because, you know, the first, you know, this one is going to sell millions. Yeah, this yeah, but it, second, it's like Half Life 3. Like, it's going to sell millions, but they never make it because they can't be bothered making the rest of it. Like, there's no need. They've made so much money on the first. Like there's, there's no need to make Half Life free because there's no push, and that's my issue with creating this idea of cre- recreating Final Fantasy VII but splitting it off into little segments 
you might never get to the last segments because the PS6 might be coming out by the time you get halfway through this series. We'll play it in PS6 then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's the issue then. Like, yeah, you need how a things map. function. You need, you need yeah, to know. If they don't know, then that's not a good idea because it means they've not really fought it through. Yeah, I, I'm put off with the episode, um, episodic episode. Uh, yeah, I wish they would have just, like, if, if it needs to take longer, just creating the whole thing, fine. But the way they're doing it just feels like they're just recreating, they're just using the Final Fantasy 15 engine and just creating, like, little mini stories. I'd rather just go and get the original discs and just play on the, on the PS1 here. No. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right, so uh, next game, Nick. The Marvel uh, Avengers game. Oh really, Marvel, Marvel cosplay? Marvel <laughs> cosplay. Marvel I mean, slightly off something wrong with that guy over there. <laughs> so you like the no frills Avengers? Yeah, I mean, uh, no, I mean, coming good, from it's good voice coming, acting. Coming from the movie, you know, I'm excited. I mean, I saw a lot apparently of those voice actors are the only voice actors in the whole industry. <laughs> Who else does voice acting besides them? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. At least we know there's no um, more Uncharted coming because they're all in there. So it's... <laughs> oh, yeah, they're all there. <laughs> well, you it's know, like no, no, just going to play some maniac in The Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, it's a co-op game, right? It's on. A four-player it... co-op. It is it couch be... co-op or is it you online can only? Play... You can play solo the, the entire game, or yeah, you have the option to play up to four players co-op. So if you play solo, does that mean you have to switch between characters? You could, I, I guess. And then the other. I'm guessing be... it's like puzzle-based in areas, like oh, the Hulk's got to do something over there to activate this <clears> thing we're doing over here. Yeah, because the characters you got are uh, Black Widow, Hulk, Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. And no Hawkeye. Is that five? No Hawkeye. <laughs> you know, left up again. He's too shit. You have, you have a lot of um, other characters also will be coming in. It could be DLC down there because they want this is look like yeah, this could be a, a service. Gets games a service. It? Yeah. Yeah. This is what they're looking to do. Nah. And they can add um, more stories or play as villains or something like that. Yeah, I'm um, the young Taskmaster and um, Taskmaster there was, really. There was a version. I'm sure they they did, and then also the version of Hank Pym. Um, they think it looks he shrunk. Someone shrunk. Oh down yeah, the yeah, machine. yeah. I did see that. I did see that. Yeah. So they think that's Hank. Someone said they think that's Hank Pym. Uh, and who else was the other? There was another. I can see them doing Spider Man. You know, the PS4 one. Yeah, they said PS4 is gonna have some because the game rights benefits and stuff. Yeah, exclusive content. So you like the look of that then, Nick? Yeah, I mean, they had little bits of gameplay in there, and it looks sweet. So. Uh, it's a bit... Cause it's a tomb Ra- is it the, the Tomb Raider guys, or is it Deus Ex team that's making it's it? It's a bit of everyone. It's, 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 it's a bit of... Um, it's, it's, um, I do have Montreal, uh, Crystal well, Dynamics, Crystal yeah. North. Uh, I think it's Crystal North. It's, it's, it's a bit of everyone in there. I believe there's, as I say, I'm, I'm sure I read somewhere, it's actually like some splinter ones from there as well. So it might be some other smaller studios involved. I'm sure I oh, right. read or saw there might be four studios possibly. Are we thinking involved. this is going to be like Destiny then? Where there's like, oh, there's a new it threat and everyone's got to team up again. You know, yeah, yeah. Keep... I think it could be. I, it could like be seasonal like content. I mean, there's enough uh, villains in Marvel World, Marvel Universe. Uh, MCU and you no know, from things and also the actual Marvel comic book, you know, uh, universe. Yeah, yeah. Between all the different, um, you know, galaxy universes and things like that, the Ultimates, etc., and all the other different. Did that get so, a yeah, release date? Be... Good. Did they get a release date? Um, Is it next I, year? It, I don't know, maybe twenty twenty. Yeah, I think it's May fifteenth of May twenty twenty. Yeah. It may have I think, I don't think it's this year. Yeah, I don't like the date though. But again, but, that's yeah, going to be um, a cross gen. Good to get title. the yeah. It'd be good to get a decent game um, from Marvel. Like obviously, you had DC um, EU online thing as well. I, call it. I'm wondering how many of these games are really built for the next gen, and we're just getting the ports basically. The last gen ports. Yeah, you just you just don't know, do you? That's the thing. It happened a lot last time, didn't it? So yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, next so game then, Nick. Alliance. Yeah, no, 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 no. Next game, so Nick. Next game, next game would be uh, Star Wars. Oh, that's uh, one on my list as well. Yeah, I like it. I like it. 
Uh, it's third, nice third person, runs at 60. Uh, I like it. And the fact that I'm not into the Star Wars universe, I've never seen a Star Wars movie. The fact that I'm um, this. Okay, we, we'll just stop me. that right now. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never seen He's a Star Italian, Wars. right? He lives in the third world. They don't get Star Wars in the third world. No, I never Surely get <laughs> I never give it two crabs. Give it a watch, Nick. It is worth it. Though. The, You've got to the, watch it just for pop. pop the movie no, has been culture. spoiled. The movie has been spoiled to me a million times over. I don't. I don't care. That's the, the same reason I never played Heavy Rain. For those that have watched Star Wars, right? Fallen Order. It's set just a few years after Episode Three, so it's when Anakin becomes Darth Vader. Apparently, this Jedi has survived whatever attack they did. You know, the Order Sixty Six. Well, they ordered all the, the Jedi Indians. to be murdered. Yeah. <laughs> the so apparently this, this Jedi is on the run and from Darth Vader's right. apprentice. So that's what the story is. Yeah, you should be watching it, Nick. It's pop culture. I mean, I forced myself to watch the Harry Potter movies, the Twilight movies, and things like that, simply because... <laughs> hey, you even in... watched... Um... Oh, what's, that? In... Po- what's that? Pop culture. Thing? You have to watch them to know what they are. What's the, uh... I couldn't tell you what happens in anything. What's the yeah, thing everyone, all the women watched? Grey Summit. Grey's Anatomy? No, oh, no, no. The the romantic, oh, the trilogy films. Oh, uh, Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you, I am, you even I watched, am watched that? that. <laughs> oh, no. No, I have watched that. No. Admit it, Scott. <laughs> I, I really couldn't bring myself to do that. It's like Sex and the City. <laughs> There's yeah, a limit you can, you. you can keep it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have much of a limit, but yeah, I'm like, that's not for me. That's All right, Nick. Fourth, fourth. Oh, yeah. Star Wars actually comes out this year, right? Yeah, November 15th. Yes, November. It's the end of the year. Yeah, it's a Christmas game. That's the game we're actually going to be getting soon. Then I have Ori 2. Ori 2, the game that got delayed. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Who's making that? Who's the developers of Ori 2? No, I don't know. <laughs> Ori and the uh, Wisps. Um, Isn't it? Uh... Moon Studios. Oh, yeah, they made the f- yeah, yeah. Did they make the first one? Best enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. They everybody, made the first. They've only made two every, games. Everybody, everybody on Twitter was like, oh, because there's, there's rumor that there is this rumor. I'll purchase it. They can make about yeah, about to purchase somebody, and everybody was like, oh, get Moon, get Moon Studio. I don't, I, I don't know. I guess they had, yeah, they signed a development deal in 2011, so I guess that Microsoft owns the IP regardless. Mm-hmm. So they'll never come to. So on the uh, PS4 consoles on this I mean, Microsoft yeah. once. It... I don't know. If also, Phil Spencer latest interview with Giant Bomb was like, oh no, it was not Phil Spencer. It was Matt Booty. Matt Booty said, yeah. you know, it's up to it's up to them. It's up to it's up yeah. To they, they don't care personally. They want to sell like, wherever they can sell. If Sony said if Sony wanted Halo on PlayStation, apparently they would allow it on PlayStation. So never say never. But which is never. crazy. Imagine saying that like five years ago. Huh. I have to play Halo Infinite on the PS5. <laughs> All right, so last game then, Nick. Elden Ring, which we didn't see really? anything. We didn't see anything didn't... about it. I know, but it's from software, man. Come on, a platinum Sekiro. It's gonna be just another from software game. Open world, baby, give it to me. Pump they're all open world. No, they're not. They're the same my open world. Oh, they're all open world. There's no like loading yeah. screens, is he? Okay, still, they're, they're only like uh, explorable like areas. Can... It's not... It, yeah, it's not... yeah, they're all open world. It's just that the world consists of corridors. I mean, <laughs> if, if Dark Souls and Sekiro are open worlds, then <laughs> God of War is also open world. Yeah, God of War is open world. Nah, uh, it's, like, it's like multiple corridors. You know, it's, it's, it's open no, no, areas. It's, just, I don't it's open so. world with that just doesn't have fields. Uh, like Days people think gone. of open world, they think of a giant like, field. Days Gone, Horizon, Grand Theft Auto, these games are open world. But I mean, they're sandbox. They're sandbox. They are, they you think sandbox. of an open field as open world, but no, that's just a sandbox game. Yeah, open world just means no loading screens, basically. So oh, well. That's whatever. your fifth game, Elden Ring, with uh, George. I'll never finish the books, Martin. Yep. Elden Ring, Ori 2, <laughs> Star Wars, Ever. Avengers, Final Fantasy 7. All right. Scott, how about you? Well, I've actually got a list of no, it's not just a top five, but I've actually 20. got a list of about eight games, nine nine games maybe. Ah, games, that wow. Kind of just caught my eye more than wow. anything. You said E3 so, was um, bad. No what particular order. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it doesn't mean I'm going to buy I'm not going to buy anyone. Buy any I'm just saying. It's, oh. Well, a lot of them are probably in the, um, let's go into my draw, right. or okay, they'll be on the draw. Xbox. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, essentially. What are your nine yeah, sock draw so games? Le- first one. Three, four, five, six, eight, seven, eight. Eight, eight. eight. All right. Are they in order? Are they in like order? Oh, okay. No, no, I don't do orders. I'm not in order. I can tell. So, first one then we go with is Legend of Right. Legend I of Right. That looked quite good. Oh, you mean the um, looks interesting. Drawn to Death. That's the the Drawn to Death Tearaway RPG. Um, RPG yeah, RPG it's like time, a, a notebook the... RPG with different. Yeah, I think that not for me, but I thought it looks interesting. It looks like they've tried something new. Something a bit fresh with you know, those obviously heavily influenced by it looks like it's actually made by a games. Japanese studio. I think this is Japanese, right? So you can probably guess then the story is going to be half decent and quite long uh, and convoluted and really difficult to um, remember everything. So, but yeah, I think that looks um, the premise of it to be. I get a date a on that? Uh, I think. Um, oh, 2020. Uh, 2020 is so we had um, for that. I'm guessing yeah. it's probably got first on Xbox because they presented it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know if it's um, an exclusive or it's, well, it's going to be PC yeah, yeah. as well. But um, yeah, it's, it looks interesting. I think for, it, it could be a good game for for people on there. It's so not I, one I, you'd I play though. Over the other Minecraft dungeon. It's not. Yeah, it's not my cup of tea. But I think it looks interesting. Right. Next game. Uh, we didn't see really see any gameplay for it, but. The fact that it's only now really been made into a game makes you think, where's it been for the last uh Oh, yeah, you know, I, knew, decade, I know what you're talking about. Decades. The, ble- the people that stare in corners. Where's that been? People <laughs> stare in corners. Where, I mean, where's it been? You think, like, yeah, it's just an obvious game, wasn't it, from, you know, to make. I still well, laugh at the it. reveal when like we said, were like, it's, it's got to be Outlast. It's got to be uh, Alan Wake. <laughs> yeah, it's Alan, it's Alan Wake. Last thing I guess was Blair Witch. Was, you know, yeah. Well, well, let's say it, it was put in back. I was looking in the forest, and I was like, "It's Blair Witch, isn't it?" And then you can see the symbol. And I was like, it's Blair Witch. <laughs> so yeah, I think so. Again, no yeah, gameplay. We did see gameplay, but right? Probably take a guess. I thought we saw gameplay. Well, I don't know. Like, we, like you're just walking know, around with your camera. It look. It could be you say. It could be the outlast part. I'm not sure. It's then I thought. Have you got that camcorder? Is it gonna be like um? Is it fatal yeah, yeah. frame? The Jap- the Where you Nintendo. Like, like a Nintendo ghost. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering. Is it got it's called Project Zero but, in uh, Europe. Yeah. Project Zero, has it? Yeah. But um, but yeah. So I thought, yeah, it's got a bit of a. And they only you know, appear you know, on the camera. Halloween, type of thing. Resident Evil, Silent Hill. Yeah. So yeah, I think that could be interesting. Again, depending on how it's done, we lost uh, obviously the PT slash Silent Hill. This could be a good replacement for it. I think so. Um, yeah, I think that'd be interesting. That's probably gonna be a multi uh, multi-platform yeah, one. I, I would thought. I'd expect some type of timed exclusivity, but yeah. eventually going multi. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. But I think that's one to um, put the shits <laughs> of people definitely. All right, next game. Um, the next one that caught my eye uh, would have been the twelve minutes. All right, that's on my yeah. list as well. No, yeah, I again, the, you know, we the gameplay is gonna be what was what we saw because you know it's not. Um, I think in the stream when we looked at it, I said, oh, is it Resident Evil, the room? I meant Silent Hill, the room, obviously. <laughs> Which was a game, but, Silent but Hill see, 4, the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it obviously kicked off then, you can see, no, it's it's going to be a puzzle-based yeah, yeah. Because we actually you know, had a few, like, Time Loop Groundhog, uh, Groundhog Day games, like, because we had the uh, one from Bethesda, which is Death Loop. Well, the PT and PT was, <laughs> was the same, time, was the time loop but yeah, like we had, um, yeah. but Death Loop, yeah, Death loop, yeah, yeah, which was just yes. keep redoing the same thing over and over. So this seems to be like, yeah, no, you that... play for twelve minutes. And apparently, you play as a husband, yeah. and it should be sharing a romantic evening with your wife. And instead, a man breaks Ooh, in, pregnant, oh, right. pregnant as well. So it's that asterisk, in, also pregnant, yeah, um, also pregnant. Right? <laughs> breaks into your house and and accuses your wife of murder. And then proceeds to beat you both to death. <laughs> because apparently that's yeah, a thing. Yeah, so she's well, he's he's a policeman slash hitman, maybe in disguise. We thought, doesn't <laughs> it? Apparently, it's getting a twenty twenty well, release. The person that makes like a small team that's making this. Yeah, you can imagine that. You can imagine it's only a small because of the. It's not graphic. Well, from what we see, it's not graphically. Um, uh, no, no, it's not intensive. Uh, draining. So, but as you can imagine, then it'll be a, some good programming, some great story writing in there, and that's. 
and obviously that's would be a smaller team you can imagine. Yeah, apparently that. the main guy also did all the aesthetics on the witness. Yeah, I can understand that. Oh, I can get and that. The, the, he had a game the idea and decided to learn how to program as well, and this is what he's made. Oh, good for him because it looks it looks good. It looks interesting. Yeah, it does look interesting. Could be a could be. Good. It's not coming out could be next good. year, I mean, you, but definitely one I'll look into. Even if it's just a budget title, maybe, but it's I think that could be a good one. Yeah, yeah, like. Yeah. It all depends whether it's got rep- replayability for a lot of people. You know, whether after you know the story, yeah. whether you can just do it dead quick, like gone home. Yeah, so it's just, it, yeah, you just don't know how many like how many loops is going to be. Yeah, yeah. Like, you could extra loops as DLC. Like how much of a puzzle <laughs> it actually is, or whether you can just, once you know the answer, you can just do it really quick. Yeah. No, well, just run upstairs if you are taking me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that one's really, um, like it's the number three on my list. Uh, the fourth one, I didn't really see much on it, but again, it's more to do with the premise. Um, when I was reading up on it, it was the Gods and Monsters. Or the Ubisoft reveal. Which is, so essentially, yeah, it was a breath of the wild, but for non-Nintendo. Yeah, we, so I, think... I don't know, if, did they say if, if this was going to be like a 3D open world game? It From the kind of cinematic screenshots, things that I saw, it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's just going to be a version of, <laughs> as I say, like, Witcher slash uh, Greek mythologies. I only worry about this game about style. is Ubisoft because they like making games as a service. Like, so how are they like well, someone, getting money out of this game? What are they gonna do? I, I, like I said, I think someone's. I'm sure I said someone said that it's like gonna be like they've taken Assassin's Creed and just, you know, painted Zelda over the top. Of it. But <laughs> so um, you think there's gonna be like yeah, towers it's... and oh, you can access all the fifty side quests in this area now. God, who knows what I would say? It's Ubisoft, and you know it's going to be a tower somewhere. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think. But again, I think that's good for your no the non Nintendo people. You may have have something that might appeal. Yeah, that is true. There is, how there's a bit of a gap there, isn't there? There's a bit of a niche that you can fill. Like there isn't a ton yeah, of kids I mean, games. Look, some people on the console. Some people don't want to buy a Switch just for you know one game. I mean, I'm not that way. So, but yeah, so I thought that one. I don't know much about it. I thought looks. It's got the look of it, and I think that, that could appeal to a lot of people. Big Greek mythology. Yeah, go for it. Um, what else was on? This one, I only saw the tra- a little bit of the trailer. Don't know a lot of it. Sounds interesting. Was Ghostwire. That's on my list as well. I think that. Um, this is by again, yeah, Tango Gameworks. Nice little premise on that. That make the Evil Within games. Yeah, so you're going to have that. Yeah, it's, it's going to go for the supernatural route. and. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just sounds, again... It's, it sounds interesting. If you don't know, I don't know if you watched this one, Nick, but it's about it's set in Tokyo and people just start disappearing. It's like the rapture. Oh, yeah, uh, I've seen, I've seen it. It's like uh, people, people said it's like a combination of uh, Ghost of Tsushima and Death Stranding. <laughs> it kind of looks like. Yeah, it's 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 very much like a mystery there. And I think the remnants of the people that are left, like you have to figure out like what's going on. So it's not yeah, they're, survival they're, they're, horror, they're, but it's, it's more like an action adventure game. But it's like it's got horror elements, I think, or psychological horror elements. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought I, th- I thought it'd be like a yeah, like a, like a detective type. But I think they didn't yeah, show any yeah. gameplay, and they didn't say no, what platform no, it's, it's just... going to be on or any date. So I think this is going to be like a mid-gen, next-gen game. Yeah, I, t- I can't see it being this gen. Yeah, I, I got a funny feeling. But I thought, yeah, I, I thought that that kind of sprung out a little bit to me. Uh, the one which I think we've all got is obviously Star Wars, as long as they get rid of some of those... Um, oh, the Wookiee Wookie, textures. Um, Wookie, Wookie, Wookie <laughs> textures. And, uh, but yeah, it's got a little bit, you know, a bit of Uncharted, Horizon, uh, Tomb Raider, Force Unleashed. Yeah, it's a bit of everything. Uh, someone mentioned... Uh, yeah, I think someone said it might have a little bit of From Software style, you no know, Dark Souls style battles. You know, with... it, it, it looked very easy in the demo. But that's the that's demo. demo. Yeah. So, so someone was saying that oh, the, they're like the level three hundred, you know, in a game. It's like, right. but the, so the enemies die dead quick. So maybe it's going to be much tougher mm. when we actually play it. Yeah, I think you're gonna. Yeah, I think I think so, um, again, listening back to some of the um, people who were reading back or had some hands on this, like kind of like yeah, you run in the middle, storm troopers will go down with one or two hits, but. That's it. Every else you've got to kind of think it out. It's always a challenge making like a Souls game with Star Wars because as a Jedi, you want to feel really powerful. As a Jedi, you don't want to be yeah, uh, yeah, struggling yeah. with Stormtroopers. 
And again, they confirmed as well things like, um, well, I don't think it's going to be those like no loot boxes and things like that. But it's 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 they're going um, to monetize you somehow, somehow, yeah, some way, probably we'll get some money out. Of you. Was it was it this one? But um, they did say that this is going to be the character. He's he's good. There's no evil say the four stocks the horse yeah. it's, it's canon and it's, and it's a bit like and like you said he's been he's been if he's been um hunted by um no sith a sith apprentice so we want to call him um yeah he's gonna be a he's a true character he is a jedi he is a good guy and the character's name is a uh, cal kestis and he's played by the actor that you said yeah, you know cal. uh yeah jerome from um gotham i can't uh, think no, his real that. name no the the proto joker from uh, Gotham. <laughs> so yeah, so that was on there. Now I got two more. Right. So uh, it's a bit of a long one. Uh, next one is um, I don't think we saw there was Pistol Whip. I didn't see this one. Did you? It's a VR game. Oh, a PS VR game or just like Oculus VR? Uh, it's no the no it, it's, it was an Oculus car. No the the guy who was kind of doing the demo or in the trailer for it was wearing an Oculus um, hand. No, the, hand, yeah, the sensors uh, bars and things on it. Yeah, um, essentially, it's it looks like it's a mixture of uh, was it like super hot, I think, but John Wick esque. Oh, really? No, you got duck, dodge, and shoot. Yeah, dual wielding. Don't, don't they guns. call it like a name like gun cutter or something like that, where you can? Oh, that, that's um, that's what's in there. That's the old Christian. Oh, equilibrium. Uh, <laughs> equilibrium. <laughs> Gun Guncana or something like that. <laughs> but um yeah, but someone's I think they said this is also a bit like a um uh, a rhythm game almost. Oh right. Because the way okay. you move because uh, the way you're moving. Um if you haven't seen the trailer, have a look at that. Look. So it's a VR game? Did the, um yeah, so you don't VR. know where it's gonna come to PlayStation VR? Yeah, so I think I'm not sure if it's gonna come to PSVR, but it looks yeah, it looks interesting. It looks uh have a look at the trailer. It, it, it's it says it's, it's very. I can't say it's basic, but it is kind of basic in how it looks. But it, it seems to be more about kind of accuracy and um and being just movement, you know, for it. So yeah, looks looks interesting. Is it like oh, you say it mixes Beat Saber with John Wick? Well, well, some some say again because you know watching back some of the trailers and I, think, I can't remember which channel was kind of saying, but they did re- they did seem to reference some sort of like beat to it. So I don't know if you mean like. You, you've a rhythm as in you've got to have a certain kind of rhythm as you play in like ducking, dodging, aiming, shooting. So it's kind of a whole body. I just checked out the trailer right now. And it's like the visuals look, um, it's not like realistic. It's like a bit like the witness. No. The uh, colors, something no. like that. Like it's, it's, yeah, tones. So, so it's, yeah, so it's not, yeah, so it's not kind of, you know, it's like, it's like a more detailed super hot, but then with, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you kind of see those little so you see those circles kind of floating. I'm not sure that you got dodge them, or so you, it's, it's a bit like kind of, you know, instead of collecting something, you, you duck things to shoot. It looks, it, it looks, looks like good, a game that'll definitely come like to it, PSVR, and also because of the game that like, you will sweat your balls <laughs> off <laughs> your playing and get a bit of motion yeah. sickness um, at the same time. Yeah. Like, yeah, go for it, mate. go for it because he's duck dodging, diving, and yeah, get get ripped on the go. All right. Um, yeah, so that looks interesting. Last game, then. And my last one. Last one. I know, because it's a bit of a long one for me. Is one that Nick loves. I think Watch Dog Legion. Oh, Watch Dogs 3. Be- oh, I want to see what they, how they implement this. Yeah. Play anyone. This is... Be anyone. Because, like, how are they going to do the story? Is it just going to be, like, a basic story and any character can fit in the no. story? So it just... Now, my theory on this, and it'll probably not come true, is you can be anyone. You can choose your characters, you can build your characters, but you'll get to a point in the story where you all become the same character. The voice on the phone. <laughs> and that's how you'll, you'll finish the game. <laughs> that's how you'll finish the game. I honestly think that's how it'll happen. Okay. Because you're going to be... A, it's it's going to be interesting to see how they do it. They've imp- Obviously, it's going to go down... Like, Watch Dogs 2 compared to 1 was a, a big step up. I enjoyed Watch Dogs 2. It did take me a while to get back to it. Simply, it got lost in the pile of games. But I completed it. It's a, I really enjoyed it. And graphically, yeah, it's it's essentially it's Assassin's Creed. We know that it's a version of Grand Theft Auto. But um, keep yeah, making I like them. Honestly, all the implement. So they really like yeah, trying to push see... this series. Yeah, they yeah. To be I, don't, I think it's, it's okay. The story it was a little bit cringe when they go, they start doing the post Brexit. But I think I don't think you no know, come um, October we have drones. <laughs> We're uh, turning to like dystopia. That was quick. Yeah, I mean, we're murdering people already. Obviously, it's set. <laughs> yeah, 
it said that it put just slightly obviously on that part of the things. Um, yeah, okay, the voice acting, things like that will be tightened up closer to um, release. But yeah, I think it's it's an interesting um, concept, I think, that you can literally be, you know, recruit an army. It's more like the strengths. AI partner is the main character and everyone else is just like a shell yeah. that you can put on. Um, yeah, what's the Bagley or Bagley? Yeah, Bagley, I think his name was, or Bagsley, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I do think you probably is, they say, well, you can be anyone, but essentially you're going to have like a, a core set of characters, aren't you? You're going to have your tech person, your brawler. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, you know, I can't imagine you, you that every mage. single. You have your barbarian, your mage, you yeah. have your. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's There's going to be classes. Going to be slightly. And. Yes, but it's going to be. Light variants. On the screen. So yeah. I'm guessing, like, yeah. it, did they say that you can recruit every single citizen? Yeah, pretty much. Well, anyone, you can be anyone. Oh, yeah. is it only citizens so are, which are deemed, in. like, useful, you know, as in they can join the group? Um, I'm pretty much sure they say there's almost any... any I'm any guessing you can't so. join, like, get the, um, you know, the enemies to join. In the trailer, they, they, they had the... No, I think it will be... You know, you have to be a neutral, I think, to start okay. with. But, um, so, yeah, but outside of the, yeah, the bad guy... How no, is that going to work, though? Because actually... there's no way they're going to voice, like, a thousand NPCs. I think, I think you could recruit... Even the the people on the other side, but uh, it has to, but it has to be an inn to get in there. Are they going go, like, to go like the Elder Scrolls route, where like there's loads of the same people voicing the same characters? You know, it's just you, you just man, call you Bill instead of Ted, so, or they just um they just change the pitch yeah, or yeah. on them because it could it could be randomized. They could they could probably have some of a little bit of software to randomize that. Yeah, they? yeah, because um, I'm I'm guessing like you said, they're going to be classes where it's invisible classes. Yeah, yeah. You're just gonna like randomize a bit of the backstories, that type of thing. Yeah, because if if you um if you played Watch Dogs two and Watch Dogs one even, you know when you were kind of scanning people's phones and things like that, everyone was pretty reasonably unique to a certain extent. You know, obviously it was random from names. Obviously now they're going really far into that to create even more stuff. You know. Yeah, because it looks like you. The game, each game, predecessor game, is building on the the predecessor, not doing a, a clean slate start. You're gonna have a bit of that software. There. I think that's been one of the main issues though with Watch Dogs. Like the main characters aren't very memorable. Yeah, I mean, well, the, the second one, um, but Aiden was easy enough because he was just him. Yeah, you know, you know his name. But um, the second, this new, the latest one, can't remember his that's name. That's what Mark, I mean. Like, but Mark, people think like parts. Aiden, like, because they thought he's too much of an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. But they were like, but I think with Watch Dogs Two, you had again um, a group, a group of you together, so you were interacting. Yeah, with, yeah. You, know, you didn't play those people. You kind of, but you interacted with them a lot more. So I think that's why I can't remember. So are you thinking this is going to be a bit like the Brotherhood of Assassin's Creed? Well, I said I didn't. I stopped playing um, Assassin's Creed after Black Flag. Oh, did, well, because like, no, a Brotherhood was they, they an early one. Much. Yeah, four of you, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, it started. That was creating more like of a management game where you, you're creating an organization, hmm. that type of thing. I think, yeah, I just want to see how they implement it. It sounds interesting. I did enjoy the last ones. It'd be good to see how they would actually created London to what extent. The San Francisco um, base thing was quite good. So, yeah. All right. What do you think of Watch Dogs 3, Nick? Uh, I, 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 like, I like Watch Dogs 1. I like Watch okay. Dogs 2. This one, I, I don't like. I don't like the fact that I can play with basically any NPC. I like to relate to one character, know that character. Uh, you know. Yeah, I get what you mean. Being his shoes or their shoes. It's like it's like that. That that's why. That's also why I'm not like a biggest fan of multiplayer games. Like I'll play multiplayer games, or I'm. I don't prefer multiplayer games over single player games because multiplayer games I play characters that are generic that have no like that, that I can relate to. They're they're like an avatar that I could that I control and I kick people, you know, like I yeah, yeah. people with. But they're uh, but they they are bringing that pure death as well. So again, yeah, you you could get invested in a character and want them. To, you know, you would take past less risks knowing that your your character could die and you have to be someone else. I don't know if I played Fire Emblem where you, you get soldiers like. That the, yeah. uh, the and Valkyria character. Chronicles had the same. Right? Once your soldiers died. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. So you end up you, I think. Going, loading back to your last checkpoint to uh, make sure they survive. But um, 
But yeah, so that's my um, that's my last one. That's the one I thought. When's Watch Dogs Free coming out? I didn't scribble that down. Um, I'm gonna imagine it's gonna be next. I think it is gonna be next year. Actually, that one I gotta look now. I think, I think I think it's this year, November or something. It's March. I think it says March 2020. Oh May, I, it and could I don't. Be May. Oh no, hang on, I got wrong one. Wikipedia says March. No, but Wikipedia's a liar. Okay, it's got a pre-order on the. Um, let's have a look. Release date March sixth of March twenty twenty. March again. Okay, so it's obviously it's around March next year. March, yeah, March, early March is going to be a very busy. Now going back to that, there's quite a few games that come out early, uh, early uh, in the, the first yeah. quarter of twenty twenty. Obviously, obviously, Cyberpunk which also makes you think. Will Will PlayStation Five come out? That's what I was here. thinking. I thought that PlayStation would come out around Cyberpunk, you know, because people want to play that game mm. on the latest console because it's really going to be really demanding. Well, the rumors was 2019 originally, wasn't it? For then, if it's not 2019, but again, like you say, because it's holiday for the the Xbox. Because we like Cyberpunk is meant to be a next gen game, so that's mm. our first next gen game. So it'd be weird to play that for like six or seven months before next gen comes. When did the pro come out? Hang on. When did the didn't the pro come out in May? Let's have a look. I, I bought the um the pro it's on release day. It'd be really interesting if at the PlayStation Experience they reveal the PS5, you know, everything and November. say it's coming out in March. Oh, I wouldn't surprise if they do something. What what's what's the was on what do you say? The or oh, the experience thing. That would be Is huge. that what's that those live streams? Oh, the, the, um, no, the state of ones. play, is it? State of play. Won't be surprised they won't drop all <laughs> No, no, they'll never do it on one of them. They'll do it on the play PSX because that they've, they didn't go last year. Are they doing a PSX? I think they're doing one this year. I think because they missed last year. They are, they? they all right. And they need to make that very easy. But that's the end of year, isn't it? But that's end of year normally. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? It's like October, November, isn't that's it? That's usually like November. Yeah. You know, and as of today, as of tomorrow, it's in the shop. You know, it's. No, but say like. <laughs> Oh, it's releasing in March. So you've got like good four months, good four or five months. Yeah, and that yeah. that then gives so, you a yeah, lead so on Xbox of a good five or six months. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, imagine, closer imagine that, if but... uh, they announce PS Five. I mean, they show PS Five or PSX in December. They release it in March, and March is also the day, the month when uh, Last of Us Two comes out. <laughs> Yeah, because we haven't really. Bundled. Yeah, because we haven't thought about Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us Two, and they're going to be early as well, twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. See, and they were mentioned being cross cross yeah, cross gen as well. So that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking it's it's going to yeah. be in there somewhere. PS Five release. I mean, you would have a situation Jim, where maybe, I think. I mean, the Switch proved that you know launching a system in March, you know, early in the year, it's no problem if people want it. Uh, yeah, because yeah. if Last of Us Two is a launch title on the PS5. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's going to be, it's, it's cross-chain, it's going to be for PS4 as well, but yeah. Well, I mean, like, it comes out on the day, so you can play it last gen. Yeah, yeah. But it comes out, everyone's going to want to play it the best way they possible on the PlayStation like, 5. Especially now that you know uh, Halo Infinite is going to be a launch title for Scarlet. Exactly. You, you, you may yeah. think Sony may want to, like, have, a, a, like, their best IP launching with the new system as well. Yeah, because my I. Initially, before this, I thought that Horizon 2 or some type of Killzone game would launch with the PS5. Uh-huh. But if they want to get a lead, then you go earlier in the year. Because if you go around the Xbox time, like you, like I said, you're playing like six or seven months of games that from last, like next gen games on last you gen consoles. Able, you would be able to play Cyberpunk on the new system before you could. You could on this on Scarlet, like you. It would be. That's what I mean. Be Everyone huge. like the market share is going to be completely PlayStation Five. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's just going to be playing all the money because once people buy in, because like once you've got a six seven month lead, that's it. Because everyone's bought in, then all the friends are on there. They're all playing those games, and it's very hard then to move over. Anyway, so my top five, obviously twelve minutes, which we talked about, as Scott talked about. Yeah. Um. Star Wars Fallen Order, which you both had on your list. Woo! Yeah, well, so, yeah, but I had bigger, a bigger list, obviously. But uh, that's one of the few games we're actually going to play this year. And I've seen the films, so I know I'm looking <laughs> at. Uh, Tokyo Ghostwire, or Ghostwire Tokyo. Yeah. Um, and then two games that neither of you talked about, because I guess you all hate Nintendo. I just have no interest, because I haven't got the Switch, so I'm like... Well, first is Astral Chain. 
Uh, this is a team. Right. This is from Platinum, and this is a team that made Near Automata. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it comes out August 30th. Ast- was it? Astral Chain. Astro- Astral Chain. That's yes. right. Um, so think of Platinum Games like Bayonetta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yep. it's the Near, the Near Automata team, and it's led by the uh, Mia Kami, I think his name is. Or, no, Kami. He did the Bayonetta games. This is very similar so is it... combat like that. Yeah, so it's, so it's going to be a, a Near for the Nintendo then, is it? Yeah, yeah. Nintendo. And, and, and the, uh, it's more of an RPG as well, and... They're mixing up as well, like there's vehicle sections and wait, there's all sorts of weird stuff going on. Uh, so it's definitely near Tendo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, near Tendo. That's August 30th, so we're going to play that pretty soon. And my last one is Link's Awakening, the remake. So this is a remake right. of the Game Boy game. Is this a full... All oh, right, so it's going to be a full... Yeah, yeah this is a yeah. full-on remake. And it looks full like... Yeah. like Because Zelda are known for like doing dis- different looks. Like Wind Waker was cell shaded, and then they went for a more yep. realistic, you know, Skyward Sword, um, not Skyward Sword, uh, Twilight Princess was more realistic, um, and obviously Breath of the Wild. What was the one that came out on the Wii first? What was the first one on, on the first Wii? one on the Wii was Twilight Princess. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, the, and the game series was Wind Waker. I know Paul. I know the. I know the bow and arrow, not with, with um, mechanics you're, on the Wii. You're on about <laughs> Zelda <laughs> crossbow training. <laughs> I Link's don't know. Was that yeah, it was a mini Thank God knows. I remember there was. I remember there was something involved in a, you know, an arrow, bone arrow. We had the Wii. Um, yeah, so this game, know, actually, still got it somewhere. This game is a. Uh, it comes out on twentieth of September, and it looks like Play-Doh. Like oh, right. the whole as- aesthetic is like Play-Doh. It looks like plastic. It's like a. It's very mm. unique. And obviously, like the original Zelda was top down, and so say you went off the screen, like the game would stop, and then it would move you to the next screen. So I don't know if you remember these type of games. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at the... It, um... it wouldn't continue, it'd like move you. And so that's what it's doing inside the dungeons, but outside the dungeons, it's like the camera moves freely. Yeah, I'm just looking at the... Um, don't look at the original one. Yeah, the original black and white Game Boy one. Yeah. It looks like it's a faithful remake, so it's going to be about a 15-hour game again. Um, but I'm sure that Nintendo will add loads more stuff, because they always do. I'm looking at this. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at the link now. Very, very cartoony. Yeah, yeah. It looks. Like I say it looks like some oh. kind of diorama. Yeah. Um. It looks like the toy those um, amiibos. It looks yeah, like amiibos type of thing. Yeah. It, it looks like one of those, but animated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it looks like it looks like a playset, doesn't it? I'm looking at the trees that. That's got me interested, and it's obviously out pretty soon in September. So that's a, another game we could play this year because. If you look at E3 overall, there wasn't a ton of games like that showed gameplay and that were out this year. Mm. There was only a handful, really. I've never actually played a Zelda game because they were out what? when I had the NES. Nick when never done, NES. never watched Star Wars. You've never played Zelda. Yeah, I've never. Been, I was never really an RPG fan, and then Witcher was probably. I played Final Fantasy VII when it first came out. I uh, played the Witcher to a certain extent. What was your RPG first RPG? RPG? Well, it's supposed to be Final Fantasy VII, I guess. Final Fantasy VII. First. It's not a bad one to choose, was it, really, I don't think? Well, I thought you would have been playing long before that. I thought you'd be playing no, back on the NES. Yeah, I had, I had the NES, but it never appealed to me. I, used, I loved platform games back you know, when I was young. Like I, as I was saying, I, I stopped playing them. Like I said, I stopped playing platform games, but it was all like Mario, um, again, the original Metroid and things like that. I used to like, enjoy that those games. But it was all about platform games for me. How about you, Nick? What was your first RPG? What was my first RPG? Yeah, you've ever played? Um, uh, shit. Um, I don't think I've ever played. I don't think I've ever played uh, an RPG on PS One. Uh, and on PS Two, it m- may have been Kingdom Hearts. Oh, really? Kingdom Hearts? Yeah, on PS Two. You're a, you're a Disney kid then? I was a Disney kid, yeah. <laughs> so, what was your first ever console? Uh, it was the Nintendo sixty four. But it died. Did you not play uh, Ocarina of Time? Nah, man. I, I, it was like, I was three years old when I had the Nintendo 64. I, oh, play, right. I played, I played okay. Mario. I played Donkey Kong. I played the, the, the thing where you got to shoot the, the ducks and stuff with the pistol. That was on the NES? Ah, uh, then, then I had that, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm, okay. just, I'm just looking here now of um, what were the class RPGs. Simon's Quest. That would probably be my first one I ever played. Yeah, no, I still remember that. Well... I guess it's a different type of RPG. It's not like what you'd really consider today an RPG. No, 
No, no, side scrolling RPG, yeah. Then the system died like a month after we got it, so we were like, okay, right? <laughs> Goodbye yeah. there. Yeah. So we was got there a, another flood? We got a PlayStation. <laughs> we got a PlayStation after that, and I've been on PlayStation ever since. Got PS One, PS Two, PS Three, PSP, PS Four, PS Four Pro, PS VR. And you became Italy's biggest PlayStation fanboy. PS Vita, it's the only system I ever bought for you know from from PlayStation. Wow, I still play my Vita. Yeah, no one did. Yeah, you're a Vita nerd. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hey, leave me alone. PSP is great. The only reason yeah, I bought a was... Switch is because it stopped making Vita games. You needed that handheld uh, field. Yeah, yeah, I need the, uh, the visual novels and the kinky games, you know. You know how it is. Oh, you need your uh, party panty games and shit. Yeah, you, panty need, party. You, need, you, need, you need your, t- <laughs> you need your tentacle porn. I mean, everyone needs a bit of tentacle porn in their life. <laughs> Anyway, so that's E3 done with. But do you think that Sony will do next year's E3? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, so. they're going to have a ma- massive marketing. I mean, if PS5 releases in the holiday, they're going to have a mass- massive campaign thing to do. So, so I guess it's, it's all about whether the PlayStation launches after E3 or before E3. True, yeah. true. If it's after E3, then obviously they're going to need it because... It's another avenue to promote their system. Before E3, I don't know. Yeah, if, it, if PS5 releases in March or whatever, in spring, and they're going to have the, all, all their, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to have all their games announced at PSX, you know, all the marketing there and the months in between, then there's a possibility maybe they won't, won't be at E3 again. I always thought when they started doing PlayStation Experience that that would be their E3. Like, why go on someone else's show when you can just make your own? You know, a big event, a consumer trade show, and uh, and it makes more sense for them to like have control over it. Uh-huh. So why why give shine to E3 when you can just give shine to your PlayStation experience? Just keep all your reveals for then and make it a thing worth going to, like going for because it's it's just full of panels and stuff, right? It's not like a whole lot of reveals. It's just more like developer panels and. Oh, it make it a reason to go if you saved your reveals for PlayStation Experience. Oh, speaking yeah, of, it's... go on, Scott. What are you gonna say? No, no, no. I said totally agree with you. But um, it's gonna be, yeah, it's definitely gonna be based on that release date, isn't it? But I think they should be there, even if it's released. Well, not even say if it's released before, they need to be there to to, to keep the push, because uh, obviously the X, uh, Xbox will be looming, and if it's after E three, then. Yeah, because they want to get people... Yeah, yeah. I guess they still want to promote the games that are coming out of the year mm. after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess because we, we don't know what's going to happen with E3. Like, the success... It might have gone bankrupt by the time you, uh, you come around next year. Like, because people are saying on Twitter that there's less people than ever actually there yeah, you know, on the show floor. I read it, yeah. Who knows? Because um, I think that it's funded by the ESA, and the ESA are funded... For, oh no, E3 funds the ESA, which are like the lobbying group for gaming. Mm-hmm. And obviously, they're needed right now, you know, with all the uh, microtransactions that the laws are trying to pass about microtransactions. So, I, I guess there's going to be some sort of like, publishers are going to make some type of deal with them because they're not, because obviously the publishers want microtransactions. They don't want any laws and against loot boxes and stuff like that. They want to make money. Like, EA are uh, obviously going to push against that. So, it won't be, I won't be surprised if. Give them a bit of money, you know, to continue the e-freeze. They'll um, they'll help the 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 recognised by the World Health Organization as an addiction. They go, <laughs> yeah, we'll help you. <laughs> we see you've got a problem. Here's some money. So yeah, we didn't get to finish our prediction show either because we're all one point apiece. So what's the next conference? Like the next show? Oh God, I thought it was coming up. Gamescom? Did they? Do they normally so, have like? Well, they do. Um... Well, EGX for actual on the floor, but um, that's not a show thing. Isn't, is it? So isn't there like a isn't there like a Comic Con in between or something? Like an actual conference though that we can all watch. Yeah, I mean, it, it's games. I mean, it's Gamescom, but Gamescom. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm a quick look now. Both Sony and Microsoft are like wishy washy with that. Sometimes they go, sometimes they don't. That's what I mean. Like, they don't always turn up. Okay, we got PAX, Gamescom, 
Theme Hack is an EGX, BlizzCon, TwitchCon, MagFest. So yeah, Gamescon, yeah, GDC. Gamescom. And then it's going to be yeah. PlayStation Experience and then Tokyo Game Show. Mm, I think that's what's going to be, is there? So I guess we'll continue our predictions at Gamescom. We'll see who wins. If Phil turns up, he's going to be, he's definitely going to be a full hobbit out He's not even sure. <laughs> He's like, cur- guys, I'm down here. I'm down here, guys. He'll have curly <laughs> hair, he love. Ready. <laughs> and he, he'd, be, he'd be barefoot. <laughs> I need to burn Troyer. Rest in peace. Oh, little burn. <laughs> little but, burn. Uh, little burn. You ever watched Lost in Powers, have you, Nick? No. Yeah, he must have seen. What? No. What's oh, no, it's Lost in Powers. Wow. This man, someone needs to strap him down and just watch <laughs> tons of movies. It's like, you have to hold his eyeballs open like Clockwork Orange. Yeah. <laughs> Clockwork Orange, yeah. Just yeah. watch one movie after another. <laughs> oh, that's horrific, guys. That's horrific. You've not seen that with those films. Um, yeah, so, but, um, yeah, we've got all games out. We've got quite a few got similar. To look to this year. Let's see. How many of these games would I actually buy? Let's see, what would I buy out of all these games I named? <laughs> named? Star Wars, Watch Dogs, uh, Ghostwire, I have to see how it plays. I guess it's a third person game. Yeah, like 12 minutes. In. Looks interesting. So there's quite a few games there I would I would buy. Uh, yeah. You're not thinking of buying a Switch? No, I, I've never been a multi console. I was just cons- I the one. I don't play the ones I got, the games I got now, let alone oh, the right, console. True, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Nick? What? You know, get rid of your PlayStation fanboy ways and buy a Switch. Well, he's got an I Xbox, almost, hasn't he? Though. Have you still got your Xbox? I almost got one. Yeah, he, he owns an Xbox like he's got a black friend, you know, so that way he can take the piss. No, I traded, I traded, <laughs> I traded the X the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Trade it in? Wow. That, How could you do that? How that, could you that, do that? That's, to the... when, that's when I almost got the Switch because uh, the trade value towards the Switch uh, with the X was two hundred and fifty dollars. So I was like, damn, man, I could get, I could get a, I could get a Switch with fifty dollars, but the Switch is two ninety nine. But Switch is two ninety nine. All right. Every X it's cheaper that here, gets, then? no, for every X that gets um, traded in, <laughs> Phil loses a millimeter. You know, I, don't know. I don't know, man. It's just unsatisfying to play on the thing. It's like I don't know on the handheld. No, on the Xbox. Oh right! You turn, you turn on the system. Listen, you turn on the system, okay? And the controller feels weird. I don't know. The asymmetric analogs are just, are, for me, are just wrong. Then you turn on the system, it feels dead. It's static. It's it, it, it's it's lifeless. It's like everything is so like lifeless. It's then you play a game. You, you play Quantum Break. The game is shit. You play uh, what else you play? You play. Play Sea of Thieves. The game, the game is cool, but it's like none of my friends ever play that. So it's like and playing playing that playing, playing that thing alone is it, it please. It's it's like a sleeping pill. <laughs> oh yeah, I couldn't you imagine play that. Of, playing it alone. You play Gears of War four. <laughs> Gears of War just four. Is Nick so... in the ocean alone, just looking around. Anyone else out here, guys? <laughs> I'm just... Did you join Travolta? <laughs> I'm just looking. You know how, how much it is for an Xbox S and um. I, need, I might need to buy a new uh, uh, 4K player, yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking, is it cheaper to buy one of those than a 4K player? And the sell I've still the games? got my original Xbox. What, as a, as a, do- oh, a doorstep? Yeah, it's a, it cracks I, dust. It, it's, um, it's, it actually holds my um, my door frame up. <laughs> my wind- <laughs> it's, above my, it's a lintel above my window. You know, it's <laughs> the only games I actually own for Xbox are just exclusives, that's it. Well, it's yeah, only about makes sense. When was the last time, when was the last time, when was the last time we played Xbox? Oh, about a year ago now. And what did you play? What was it? I think it was like um, Re- Recall, Sun- Sunset Overdrive. I think it was or something like or Recall, oh, okay. yeah, something like that. Okay. But yeah, it doesn't get a lot of play. It's the poor thing. Yeah, it's just like their games. It's just, the games are not good. Like you play Gears of War Five, Gears of War Four. Gears of War Four is so not memorable. I don't remember anything. It's it's a corridor. Well, the team. They've only ever made that game, right? Gears of War 4. I don't think they were like a new team, weren't they? I don't, I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, think you play, I think you play as the son of uh, Marcus Phoenix. No, but I'm not about the game developers. I don't think they've ever made another game besides that. Yeah, the Coalition is the first, yeah. Because before, before them was Epic. Epic. So they were called Microsoft Game Studios Vancouver before they were renamed to Coalition. And as Game Studios Vancouver... 
they made a Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hey, wow, it's back. <laughs> It's back again. Yeah, so they've all, that, this was like their first proper game, Gears 4, and obviously now Gears 5. So it got come a bit of slack because it's like the team have never probably been that big or made a game like that before ever. And then, it's like getting, you know, some Randy, ra- uh, random, <laughs> Randy, Randy, random, so, <laughs> Ran- Randy Pitchfork. Randy <laughs> Quaid is making a game. Randy um, Pitchfork's back. No. <laughs> Making getting some random Sony team and making the next Uncharted, it's like you can't really expect it to be on the same level as Naughty Dog. No way. No, no, no. Way. Uh, and I mean, they pinnacle studios. You, you, they've got so many people working for them. Exactly. Not all studios are like made the same. So hopefully, like Gears Five is much better than Gears Four. And but if not, then maybe like they aren't a team. Format. The way to talk about the the world and the exploration, it kind of feels like uh, a gotta work kind of situation where you have these open areas, okay, open world, like you guys want to call it, uh, kind of thing. But they didn't show nothing. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't show shit. That that was such a poor reveal of Gears Five. It's like that's got to be the worst game reveal I've seen. You know, for an actual like a flagpole game. Like imagine if Sony did that. Like here's Uncharted guys. Like, it's releasing in about three months' time, and here's a CG trailer of Drake doing something. People were like, what the hell? It kind of shows that you've got no confidence in the actual game. No, no, and that's the thing. They've not shown any confidence or misguided confidence in games which weren't that good and just drag drag people along, making and they thought it's going to be good. I mean, you know, you look at... Uh, yeah, okay, Sony have had a couple of little stutters in the last one or two games, but Microsoft have been consistent this this generation and it's they bring out hard say they bring out new hardware, but they just don't they just still not filling it up. They could have just concentrated on the X and just brought games out for the X, saw develop and just left the development for the Scarlet for another year or two, uh, my personal opinion. Because you've got to think about as well, like their IP, they don't have a lot of homegrown IP Microsoft, like Gears is something that Epic made. Halo is something Bungie made. So they're trying to replicate like more games in that franchise when they don't even it's not even part of them, really. No, they're just buying into it, and then Yeah, it'd be like if uh, I don't know, Sony buy let me see what think of a big franchise like Devil May Cry and they don't get Capcom to work on it. So they get some new studio and it's like trying to make the game fit in with Capcom's games. Mm. It, it'd feel like a Redheaded stepchild. So I'm not surprised that Gears 4, Gears 5, and the new Halos don't quite work like the old ones. Then you look on the other side, PlayStation has so many that they created themselves. But maybe that's what Microsoft need. Just start with new IP, just create your own. Then you have nothing can, to compare it to. Like the reason why Gears and Halo will look look bad is because you compare it to the other Gears and get uh, Halo games. Yeah, and the thing is, it's plenty. It's plenty of studios they got there now, so that's what I mean. Hof- they bought quite a few. Hopefully, you know, for this when the Scarlet comes out, the X and the Scarlet will have plenty of games to to play. Yeah, yeah. I think if, like the future is positive for Xbox. It's just not positive for the console. No, it's good. They have a huge, they have a huge there. uphill battles because even for guys like me, right? They they have this Game Pass service, which is great. You know, it's it's cheap. You got a hundred games, whatever. It's a great service, right? Very pro consumer. But like when you have so many people out there with PS4s, like a hundred million now. You have get you have people like me, right? I have two hundred and yeah, I have a collection on PS4 of two hundred and ninety games. I've purchased two hundred and ninety games on the system. So I am so inv- uh, I have so I'm so invested in the system. In the tro- in, in the I mean. trophy. And all whatever. those games are gonna work. In PS5, and so you're already invested. Even when I had, you even, even when I had the X and Game Pass, like I'm scrolling through the catalog, and I can't be bothered to download any of that because I'm like, I don't want to play the multiple games. I don't want to play them on X on, on the Xbox. It's like, if anything, I want to, you know, grow my collection on PS4, which is already huge. I want to, you know, grow my trophy, you know, thing. It's like I'm so invested into. It's not, just, it's not just me. It's millions of people that have PS4 at this point. I mean, not not oh, everybody yeah. buys 290 games on the system, but still. I think that's one of the downsides of, of like subscription services is they end up devaluing the games because it's like when people used to just not buy indie games anymore because they're just waiting for the to come on PS Plus. 
with Game Pass, if you've got every game on launch, every first party game and all these other games, it's like the games become worthless. Yeah, they they done and dusted within the first three months. Like you, you don't care about them anymore as much. And then yeah. if you're not asking for the full price anymore, so then they become a commodity of like, well, I drive. It's like if you look at Nintendo, there's a reason why people look at them as as great. It's because they never lower the price on purpose, and that way it always creates a an idea in people's minds that oh, these are like a quality product. Whereas it's like when you go shopping. There's a pair of shoes for ten quid or ten dollars, and there's a pair of shoes that's always hundred and twenty dollars. You're gonna think the value's in the more expensive ones. It's because uh, we don't see value in cheap stuff, and if it's something's got no value, then we don't really care about it as much. Yep. So I think yep. that's the issue with subscription. Yeah, it's they say it bec- they do become throwaway games. Yep, throwaway games. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Uh, yep. It's getting quite late now. Yeah, I'm up in five hours. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go to work. I have to go to and, uh, work. Nick's yeah. gotta get a bucket and start chugging water. It's like he's in go go. real life. Go <laughs> he's, he's, he's got to bail himself out. Right, oh, you, you, guy, you guys wanna? You guys wanna know my backlog? I, I need to start a new game. Uh, you guys want me to do... backlog? Well, if you've got two hundred ninety games, you've only played ninety. That's a two hundred game backlog. Nah, 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 <laughs> I don't think we've got time. No, nah, nah. oh, I have wait. 290 games. Uh, out of those 290 games, I have to play 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 games. I have 26 games. So you've played quite a lot, though. Yeah. My, my backlog's probably worse. If I, if I include the digital ones and all the stuff we've got. I mean, oh, yeah. also a lot of... I, I dread, I think. Also, a lot of those 290 games, like, I played once, they were trash, and I deleted them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but... yeah, I mean... Oh, but, yeah. but, I mean, that's what Game Pass creates, that kind of mentality of, any good? No, nope, throw away. And some, some team have worked on that for four years, you know, and... Now they won't make another game because the stats show on the subscription service that everyone just played their game for five seconds. <laughs> because you, you can't create games that are slow burn. Because like you can create games that are like a slow narrative where you get invested in it slowly. Mm-hmm. Whereas Game Pass games, you can't make that because you've got to be like 100 mile per hour straight away to hook the player. Because otherwise they can just get to the next game. Yeah, and that's the problem with the plus games. So you, you, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll play it again. Then the next plus game comes out, you go, oh, well. Yeah, I take uh, game, take Borderlands gone. for example. It was it was a PS Plus game. I got it. Started playing it. Was enjoying it until there was this part that I couldn't figure out because it had some stupid ass old PS3 mechanics. And I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to stay here trying to figure this out. I don't want to go online and try to look for a solution. I I just dropped the game. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You quit the first roadblock. Whereas if you bought that for sixty dollars, yeah, you continue to play it. Yeah, that's what it creates. It like games are meant to be challenging, but if you're quitting at the first challenge, it becomes a thing of like, well, all games are going to be like pointless. They're all going to be the same. Yeah, um, good. A good example would be Bloodborne for me. I tried it. I I was struggling. I'm like, I just I'm like, do you know what? I got other games. I actually purchased with my real money, even though I did kind of purchase this. Um, I went solid delete. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking. I'm one. looking at some God of War stats. I mean, in the in the trophy section, the platinum trophy. I mean, we know that the game sold uh, uh, more than 100 million. I mean, at least 100 mil, uh, 100, 10 oh, million. 10 million. 10 million. Right. 100 million. They hope. Yeah. <laughs> they wish they had a, at least 10 million, million right? <laughs> so, about, about it, what the, the hell? So, uh, They're probably uh, thinking, what the hell? More people have bought the game than own the console. <laughs> Cody's going like I'm retiring. So the Platinum Trophy <laughs> has 5.3% of a uh, rate thing. So that means at least 500,000 people Platinum the game. And it has 54.2% of um, Last Wish, which is Spread the Ashes. That's when you finish the game. So more than... Uh, more than half people uh, completed the game. Yeah, 5.4 million people finished the game. I wrote to yeah, because I'm not a trophy holder, that's so I don't, that's I don't impressive. tend to grind out. Yeah, that is impressive. I like to finish a game. I mean, like I said, I don't go for the trophies, but I like to finish a game. I'm usually on difficult, but no, on hard. But like I said, yeah, it creates a very specific, like, a, a specific type of game shines in a service like Game Pass. A game that's, like, pick up right away, and it gives you that, like, serotonin boost. 
okay, I'm, I'm going to play this now. The stats for Spider-Man are even more impressive. You know, the, the game also sold 10 million, and the Platinum, the platinum is 9.3%. That doesn't shock me because it's a lot easier to do than God of War. It is. Yeah, God of War, you've got to kill the Valkyries. <laughs> yeah, no chance. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll leave it there then because otherwise yeah. we'll be here all night. It's yeah, like one then... o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it is one. Right, I shall speak to you all again soon. Thanks for joining me. No worries. Bye bye. Bye all. I'll see you on YouTube. See you see later. You.